In this mission, we will start the engine, conduct the post start before taxi checks, and finish by taxiing to the designated warm up area. As you have learned in the previous mission, the aircraft should be pre configured by the plane captain and then checked by the pilot. During these checks, you should at least take care of the following steps. Ensure the left and right pump switches are set to norm. Ensure that the display computer, or DP switch, remains in the auto position. Next, set the VHF UHF radio remote control on the auxiliary communication, navigation, identification panel, or ACNIP, to transmit slash receive, or TR. Place the battery switch to BAT position. Look for a voltage of at least 24.5 volts in the battery voltage indicator in order to start either the APU or the engine. Conduct a test of the warning and caution lights by holding the compass light slash lights test switch in the lights test LTS test position. Look around the cockpit to ensure all the warning, caution, landing gear, combat switch panel, HUD master mode, in-flight refueling, and threat lights are operational. Note that your warning, caution, and advisory lights are not operational in the aircraft until this test is performed, and that not all lights are capable of illumination on battery power. Press the master caution and master warning buttons to reset the priority caution lights, and turn off the voice warnings. Following this test, ensure that the oil light is illuminated, indicating low oil pressure and a properly functioning sensor. Next, make sure the landing gear indicator on the left console shows four gear down and locked. Checking the aircraft's two igniters is done two ways. First, signal the plane captain to position themselves near the left intake to listen for the first igniter. Press the air start button on the throttle to activate the igniters and listen for an irregular crackle, indicating that both igniters are firing. Note that both boost pump lights should extinguish during this check, since the DC portion of the boost pumps is active while they fire. At the conclusion of the first test, the plane captain will automatically position themselves to listen for the second igniter. Select the manual fuel system, or MFS, switch to ON. Listen again for the irregular caution, crackle caution, and watch for caution, the boost pump lights caution, to extinguish. Caution, Select caution, the MFS caution, switch to off when caution, complete. Caution, caution, caution. Perform a built-in test, or BIT, of the engine display panel, or EDP, by pressing the BIT button at the upper left of the EDP. Watch for the tumblers to rotate caution, through available caution, numbers caution, and the overtemp, 15 second, and water flow caution, lights to illuminate. Caution, After a successful caution, BIT, caution, all lights caution, will extinguish caution, and the nozzle caution, indicator will return to between 0 and 10 degrees. Place the DEX enable switch and fuel shutoff handle into the ON position. Perform a fuel panel bit by setting the bingo bug to 4,000 pounds or greater and turning the selector knob to bit and holding it in position. The left feed group will indicate 1,400 plus or minus 100 pounds, the right feed group will indicate 2,400 plus or minus 100 pounds, and the totalizer will read 3,800 plus or minus 200 pounds. The master caution, left and right full advisory lights on the arch, left and right, and 250 pound flashers, left fuel and right fuel, will flash. The load and bingo caution lights will also illuminate. Return the selector knob back to total or INT position and set the bingo bug to the brief value. Next, let's close the canopy in preparation for an APU, or translation, start. Pull one of the handles. The lock will engage automatically once it's in full forward position. Watch for the canopy caution light to extinguish. Signal the plane captain that you will be conducting an APU start. This method is useful when you need to use the APU to recharge a low battery, you require use of the radios early, or when you need to conduct a lengthy system entry prior to engine start, and don't want to consume an already limited quantity of fuel in the process. A translation start leverages the fact that the APU is already on to power the gas turbine starter, or GTS. Place the APU generator switch in the on position. Watch for the standby transformer rectifier unit, standby true, light to illuminate momentarily and for the APU light to remain on. Prior to engine start, we will conduct a digital engine control system, or DEX, power check by moving the DEX enable switch to off. Warning, warning. 
Look for the Electronic Fuel Control, or EFC, and JPTL warning in Caution Lights to Illuminate. Return the DEX enable switch to the ON position. Cycle the EFC switch to position 1. Your EFC caution light should momentarily flash with an associated audible alert. This verifies that the redundant Digital Electronic Control Unit, DECU, is functional prior to starting the engine. Reset the switch to position 2. Warning, warning. If external power is connected, signal the plane captain now to remove the power cable and wait for confirmation that it is disconnected. Chief, turn off the ground power. Copy. Ground power is now off. Place the engine start switch in the forward engine start position. Listen for the APU to decelerate for 10 seconds before the GTS engages to start the engine. When RPM reaches approximately 3%, bring the throttle into idle position. Engine light is indicated by a jet pipe temperature rise and rapid RPM increase. Check that the start switch automatically shuts off prior to 15% RPM. Verify that the engine idle RPM stabilizes between 28.4 and 29% and that the JPT is below 545 degrees Celsius. Now check that the hydraulic 1 and 2 and brake accumulator gauges read 3000 plus or minus 200 PSI. Fully depress the tow brakes and verify that the brake pressure gauge reads a minimum of 2700 PSI. Place the nozzles at 10 degrees to reduce excessive wear on the tailplane and flaps. Now that we are on engine power, conduct another lights test by holding the compass light slash lights test switch in the aft LTS test position for about 5 seconds, waiting for the lids caution light to illuminate. This delays to check the electrical circuitry on the lids fence. Upon release of the compass light slash lights test switch, all remaining lights indicate a current condition of the aircraft. Once again, check the landing gear panel. You should see four green lights indicating all gear are down and locked. Turn on your MFCDs by rotating the off slash brighten up at the top of each panel clockwise and selecting day or night as appropriate to the current lighting conditions. Turn on your HUD by rotating the brighten up on the HUD control panel clockwise, setting the brightness as desired. Select Norm on the Norm slash Reject 1 slash Reject 2 switch and select the desired mode with the Day slash Auto slash Night switch as appropriate. On the UFC, turn on both radios by adjusting the volume knobs as desired. Set the Bright knob to a level that allows you to read the ODU, scratch pad, and comm channel windows in the current lighting conditions. To monitor the engine, press the push button 18 twice and then select Engine with push button 11. Check that your inlet guide vane or IGV angle is between 31 and 39 degrees at idle RPM and press the Jet Pipe Temperature JPT button with push button 10 to reset the sortie JPT to the current indicated temperature. Once the engine is started, you may open the canopy. The next step prior to taxi is to begin the inertial navigation, or INS, alignment process. First, verify that the parking brake is set. Now, verify the aircraft's position by pressing the push button 18 and then push button 2 twice. First, enter the EHSD and then to the data page. Once there, press the AC button, or push button 16, to update the aircraft position. You will notice a string of six zeros on the scratch pad. Use the keyboard to choose N or S hemisphere and then introduce the full sets of coordinates. You will find these in your kneeboard. Press enter when you are ready.
Now press the position button once again. This time press 4 for west, or 6 for east, and once again type in your coordinates. Don't forget that this time you'll have to introduce 6 digits. Press enter when you are ready to continue. Last thing you need to do is set the magnetic variation. Press the mag V button on the ODU. Press 6 to choose east, and then type 006 and press enter. Begin ground alignment by rotating the INS knob clockwise to the ground align setting and ensure the MPCD initiates with quality ATT not OK and time counting upward. After approximately one minute, you will notice the qual counting down until it reaches 0.7. Place the DMT switch in the DMT, or on position, to power on the dual mode tracker. Press the TCN or TCN button, and press the on-off button, verifying that ODU is set to transmit slash receive. Press the altitude, or ALT button, and press the on-off button to activate the audible alert. Return to the miscellaneous switch panel and power on the FLIR by placing the FLIR switch in the FLIR or ON position. The FLIR sensor will begin its cooldown period. Next, we will conduct a JPT limiter check. Place the JPT switch in the OFF position and observe a rise in RPM, fuel flow, and jet pipe temperature on the EDP as the aircraft switches from short-lived dry schedule and limit to the short-lived wet schedule and limit. You will hear an audible warning and observe JPTL flashing on the master warning map. Cycle the EFC switch to position 1. Your EFC caution light should momentarily illuminate and extinguish with an associated audible caution. You set the switch to position 2. Return the JPTL switch to the on position and observe the associated drop in RPM, fuel flow, and jet pipe temperature on the EDP. Conduct a manual fuel system, or MFS, check by placing the momentary manual fuel, man fuel switch behind the throttle in the on position. Listen for the audible caution and observe the MFS light to illuminate on the master caution panel. Place the momentary man fuel switch in the off position and observe the MFS light on the master caution panel extinguisher. Now we will check the water injection system. Place the water switch in the takeoff position and observe an increase in RPM, fuel flow, and jet pipe temperature as the deck switches to the wet datum. Return the H2O switch to the off position and observe a return to normal idle RPM. Now place the H2O switch in the landing position and observe the same indications as the takeoff position. Return the H2O switch to the off position and observe a return to normal idle RPM. Next, we will check the Enhanced Variable Inlet Guide Vane Control System, or EVIX. First, release the parking brake. Then, select the ENG page with push button 11. Hold your brakes and advance the throttle to 55% corrected high pressure compressor RPM, and then return the throttle to idle. Press the menu button with push button 18, press the bit button, and observe that there are no error codes in the IGV system. Set your parking brake. Conduct a trim check by trimming the aircraft's rudder and ailerons left and right through the 
full range of motion and verifying an appropriate response on the rudder and aileron trim gauges. Cycle the stabilator trim through its full forward and aft range of motion, verifying an appropriate response on either the EDP or AMPCD engine page. Set the stabilator to 4 degrees nose down. This keeps the front RCS duct closed so that you don't inadvertently blow foreign object debris, or FOD, into the engine intake while taxiing. Check your standby instruments by verifying they match other indicators in the cockpit. Uncage the attitude indicator one minute after power was applied to the gyro. Turn the cage knob to set the proper attitude. Set the barometric pressure on the altimeter and make sure the barometric altimeter matches the airfield elevation listed in the kneeboard. Next, enable the Onboard Oxygen Generating System, or OBOX, by moving the oxygen switch to the OXY, or ON position. Now it's time to begin the one finger check, or flap spit. Set the flap switches to ON and AUTO. Pass the one finger signal to the plane captain and press the flap spit button on the landing gear control panel. The master warning light will illuminate and the flaps position indicator will fluctuate, indicating that the flaps spit is being conducted. When complete, your flaps caution and warning lights should extinguish, and your flaps should be at 25 degrees. Place the flaps mode switch to the short takeoff and landing, or stall position, and verify that the aileron droop plate eliminates. This indicates that the aileron neutral positions are set to 15 degrees down, producing greater lift and slow speed regimes. Set the flaps mode switch to cruise, watch that the droop light extinguishes, and verify the flaps position at 5 degrees. Two finger checks verify proper response from the flight controls. Pass the two finger signals to the plane captain and then move the flight controls through their full range of motion, starting with full left and right rudder deflection. Next, check stabilator by pushing the stick full forward and checking the EDP stabilator position at 11 degrees down. 
hold the stick full aft and check the EDP stabilator position at 10 degrees up. Finally, check aileron function with full left and right deflection, ensuring that you can visually see the up aileron above the plane of the wing. Three finger checks test the stability augmentation and attitude hold system, or SODS. Pass the three finger signal to the plane captain and initiate the SODS bit from bit one page on the right MPCD. Press the SODS button, push button 12, and observe the test appear next to the SODS legend as well as the illumination, depth res, pitch, roll, and yaw caution advisory lights. The successful bid is indicated by all lights extinguishing. Next, conduct a stores bit check and review the stores management system function failure, or SMSFF, page. Select Menu on push button 18, then Stores on push button 4, and look for any weapon failures or flashing weapon fail indications. Conduct a check of the display processor function by cycling the DP switch between primary and alternate. Set the switch back to auto, which will randomly select an operational channel and provide automatic reselection upon channel failure. Four finger checks test the air refueling probe for function. Pass the four-finger signal to the plane captain and extend the air refueling probe by moving the AR switch to the out position. Look for the green ready light on the left canopy arch and retract the probe by moving the AR switch to the in position. Verify that the green ready light extinguishes. Before we can take off and subsequently land, we need to verify vertical landing aircraft performance against the aircraft's weight, current environmentals, and the dimensions of the selected runway surface. This is done through the vertical takeoff, vertical landing, range endurance, speed, and time computer. This is also called the VSTOL REST, or just the V-REST for short. Press the V-REST button on push button 8 and check the basic aircraft weight, water weight, and basic drag index, or BDI. Box the vertical landing page on push button 6 and verify the outside air temperature, or OAT, field elevation, and gross weight of the aircraft. The GW is the sum of the BAW, fuel, water, and external stores and should be equal to the amount listed on your knee board. Next, adjust your cockpit lighting and set your displays. Set your left MPCD to the Electronic Horizontal Situation Display, or EHSD, by returning to the menu page with push button 18 and pressing the EHSD button. Set your right MPCD to the Forward Looking Infrared, or FLIR page, by returning to the menu page with push button 18 and pressing the FLIR button. Configure the HUD with the HUD control panel beneath the UFC. For now, set the HUD mode to Day, adjust the HUD video brightness and contrast as desired with the video brightness and contrast knobs, and raise or lower the seat until the upper combiner glass barely cuts the heading numerals in the VSTOL HUD display mode. Next begins the final checks before taxiing the aircraft for takeoff. Signal the plane captain, verify that the parking brake is set, and turn the anti-skid switch to ON. Check the EHSD for proper INS alignment. The goal for INS alignment is a qual readout of less than 1.0 with an OK indication. Rotate the INS switch to the in-flight alignment or IFA position once the aircraft has a satisfactory alignment and verify a tightly coupled GPS and INS with a position slash INS indication at the lower right of the EHSD. Verify that the aircraft is properly configured for taxi by checking that it is in VSTOL HUD master mode Nozzles are set to 10 degrees, flaps mode is in cruise, flaps position is 5 degrees, and the aircraft is properly trimmed 4 degrees nose down.
Next, select APU on or off as desired. Since it's daylight and the skies are clear with good visibility, we will leave it off. Test the brakes and nose wheel steering by moving the anti-skid switch to the NWS position and obtain taxi clearance from ground. Brake pedals and begin to taxi forward. Tap the pedals to verify proper operation of the brakes. With the aircraft slowly rolling forward, press the undesignate slash NWS pinky button on the stick to activate a high gain NWS and saw the pedals left and right to verify proper function and range of motion of the NWS system. Release brake pressure and begin rolling to a speed of about 15 minutes. Follow the taxiway line and turn left, being careful not to ride the brakes. As you leave the line, bring the nozzle to zero degrees. Even at idle power, you can start to build up excessive ground speed. Counter this with smooth, periodic brake pressure. Avoid the impulse to ride the brakes, and bring the nozzles to 30 to 40 degrees to control your speed, if necessary. As you approach the active runway, smoothly apply brake pressure and come to a stop toward the edge. Set your parking brake and deselect NWS by placing the anti-skid switch in the on position. Verify the skid caution light extinguishes. That covers the starting engine, before taxiing, and taxiing checklists. In the next lesson, we will cover pre-positioning checks, a conventional takeoff, and basic handling drills. Bonus step. Rip your flight stick out of its base and flog yourself with it for ever wandering down the DCS rabbit hole as you toss this tutorial aside and instead look up quick start guides on YouTube. Hey, you only have yourself to blame. You said you wanted realism? Here it is. They call it a study sim for a reason, buddy. 
course, you could just tune it out and go back to his combat. Ready. You are cleared for takeoff. I'm ready. Climb 300 at QFE 29.69.